One of the most used peripherals in any desk setup is probably the mouse. With the evolution of the PC, the mouse has always been there, growing with it. But with only so many combinations and designs, are we finally reaching the end game or the final form of what a mouse could be? I have no idea, but the Razer Orochi V2 might be cutting it close. Just got the Razer Orochi V2 and been testing it these past few weeks. Spoiler alert, I should have listened to the hype because I literally can't put this mouse down. I simply don't want to switch to any other mouse because the Razer Orochi V2 works so well with my workflow. I primarily use the mouse for admin work, so general browsing and editing videos with the occasional splash of gaming. And it's met all my needs. I'll go over the functions of the Orochi V2, what I liked, what I didn't like, and if this mouse is for you. Let's take a look. The Orochi V2 measures in with a length of 108 millimeters, with a width of 60 millimeters, and a height of 38 millimeters. The mouse is advertised at weighing less than 60 grams, but this number is without a battery. But when would you ever use this without a battery? So it definitely weighs more than that. It can connect through 2.4 gigahertz through a dongle, or through Bluetooth through your preferred device. The Rochi V2 is designed to fit two different battery sizes, AA or AAA. You can choose either one, but you can't use both. On the box, Razer claims the average battery life is 425 hours using the 2.4 gigahertz dongle and 950 hours through Bluetooth. Again, another asterisk, you need to use the lithium AA battery to get these numbers. On the bottom of the mouse, there's PTFE mouse feet. There's some at the front of the mouse, at the tail, and around the sensor. Each of the six buttons are customizable through Razer's Synapse software. And all of this can be had for the price of $69.99 USD. For my hand size and grip style, the mouse feels amazing. The ever so slight ridge on the left side of the mouse allows my thumb to grip it when I feel I need to lift the mouse or rest my thumb as I'm cruising around the desktop. I'm a big fan of the matte finish on the Razer Orochi because one, it doesn't get sticky after a prolonged use and two, it adds additional grip to the mouse. The finish on the mouse isn't completely smooth which is preferred to avoid slippage. There's almost like micro bumps on the outside shell of the Orochi that adds that much more grip. The scroll wheel is responsive and the tactility when scrolling up and down a page feels accurate. The amount of clicks you feel as you reach the top or bottom of the page is very satisfying. When I first got the mouse, the top shell was a little hard to remove until I read the manual and found out that I had to lift from this cutout and it came right off as if nothing was holding it down. Just because it came off easy doesn't mean it's not secured on there when it's in use. There are two small magnets holding the shell in place. This makes it easy to swap shells if you have any other customized Orochi mouse plates. Weight distribution feels optimal with the battery on an angle and towards the center of the mouse. From the other mice that I've used that have the battery horizontal and towards the back of the mouse, it made it feel like an unproportionate amount of weight was towards the tail end. But with the Orochi V2, the weight distribution feels balanced. Now, being able to choose between 2.4 GHz or Bluetooth connectivity is a nice added feature. If I'm browsing the web or taking the mouse on the go, I can leave the mouse in Bluetooth mode and welcome the added battery life. I can also easily enter 2.4 GHz mode by plugging in the dongle and flicking a switch if I'm gaming or need that precision cursor accuracy. It's got both covered. This is more subjective, but the overall look of this mouse design is simple and muted. Besides the minimal branding, the mouse looks like I can take it anywhere. Work, school. I'm actually surprised that this is a Razer mouse considering there's zero RGB. Now, this mouse, in my humble opinion, have very few cons. And at one point, I actually had to go out of my way to find them. But here they are. The mouse is a smaller form factor and could be a deal breaker for those that prefer medium to larger mice. My hand measures 6.9 inches in length and 3.1 inches in width. Not very large at all. And here's my hand in claw grip, palm grip, and fingertip grip. I can't see someone who has larger hands and prefers palm grip to use this mouse without their fingers going over the left and right mouse buttons. This is getting a little nitpicky, but to customize the buttons, you need to download another software program onto your computer to adjust the layout. Every other mouse brand does this, but it would be a welcome change if I didn't have to. 
especially since this is probably the third proprietary software I've installed. Lastly, I personally have not experienced this, but some other users have stated they experience disconnecting and freezing issues with the mouse. I personally have never been a fan of Razer because of the strict gaming style that they engrave into their products. But with the arrival of the Rochi V2 and its muted design, I decided to take the plunge. And I have zero regrets. The build quality, the performance, and the overall look of the mouse, I could almost recommend this to anyone. However, I can't fully recommend the Orochi V2 if you prefer a larger mouse, or if you have larger hands and rock with the palm grip style. This mouse might just be too small. But for everyone else, the Orochi V2 might become your daily driver. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you like this mouse, or if you have something even better.